Um, it is now, what time is it? 6.32-ish. Um, are there any additions or adjustments to the agenda? I'm just hoping to get a update from either Brian or Jason on the status of the greater and I, I don't remember how we left it with regard to putting out a request for bid, but I think we're at a point in time where we ought to be doing that. Probably Jason won't be here tonight, will he? He won't be, but I, I can. He won't be? He, he won't be here tonight. I can provide something of an update on. You want to do that as part of the report? I don't care what it is. Let's add it to the follow up. I think it's a good one. Okay. So it'll be number five or business number five. Um, that's a good one. Anything else? I'd also like to add just an update under the committees and volunteers about the Holcomb House uh, apartment specifically. Yes, I, that's another one. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and if there's nothing else, let's go ahead and get started. We're doing orders. Rosemary, do you have a marked up version or am I winging it? We do? Yeah. I just think. We what? I thought I put we one on you, Jeff. Oh, here it is. Oh, here it is. I got it. Thank you. And I've got some. Look at you. So accommodating. Well, I already you know, need to. I'm looking at what I make and what I just spent. I'm still getting a little bit. <laughs> 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 okay, orders. Um, Brasso Fuels, Town Garage, and Town Diesel Tank. Um, um, are 166.53 and 2773.73, respectively. Um, there is also $281.45 due from the village for a total payout of. Uh, $2,221.71. Precast concrete for catch basin, uh, a non highway project, $692. Where is that? We've got a new town garage going to Manchester. Don't hold your breath waiting for it. Wait, speak up, Rosemary. It's, it's Manchester's by Manchester's. And we're going to build that to this build to Manchester's. Filling this to Manchester. Thank you, They have agreed to pay for it. They just want to run it through our yep. account. What's that wrong? Should we hold it until we get payment? They're going to do the work this week. No, it's convenient for us to do the work right now. Uh, I'm not anticipating any problem getting paid back for it. No one who doesn't get paid gonna, never anticipates a problem with not getting paid. Yeah. We're going to do the work, but they're going to pay for it. They're paying for the uh, cash basin. But they're doing the work to install it. We're doing the work. So this is one of the other catch basins that we didn't replace? This is part of that same project. Oh, the first project? Yeah. That was outside our right away. I think if we're going to get into details about this, we probably want to talk more about it in executive session. Okay. So we do have another agenda item. Pizza. We have pizza. Pizza. Is so we'll make that seven. Jason has written something on that on the bill that might explain it. Okay, um, CAI Technologies renewal for maps and related, $2,400. The website. Okay. Uh, Casella Trash, $113.23 for the Holcomb building. That was um, noted. Trash removal for the. Did we ever get. That's all. Did we ever get that from them prorated debt? I think at one meeting you said you had given them 
what their they had a, rent would be for the month. They had a, a little bit of a rent. With the deposit? With the deposit. Well, no, without the deposit. So we never got anything for the, the partial last month that they were there? Not to my knowledge, no. They had enough credit to cover it? They had enough credit to cover it. Okay. We should look into that because we actually, we should look into that from our last meeting minutes whenever we talked about that in May or June. Um, because I think we talked about this. We should just check and make sure. Uh, Brian? Or Rosemary, do you want to take a note on that? Do you mind check, yep. checking that one? So the total cost of trash is only 113. That is what Casella charged the people who took it up. Yeah, that up was the, the drop off fee. That wasn't hauling. The cleaning fee. Hauling and cleaning and, okay. and doing everything else. So we're still in it for more than that. Yeah, no, it, it, the total ended up being just over their uh, security deposit. <laughs> um, okay. Next up is Daniel Delisi, maybe. Overpayment for clerk office fees, $45. Fisher Auto Parts for oil grease, hose caliper, kit formula. A uh, total of $118.53. Jonathan Gerard, State Park, accounts payable $40. Um, do we know what that was for? Some kind of trash bin holder. I mean, just okay. um, Green Mountain Trailers, light bar, $99.99. Hillside Trash Dumpster, $65. And that's not part of Bolcom House, correct? No, that's no. state part. Okay. Um, Tissue and pizza? Um, not right now, maybe later. Johnson Hardware and Rental, Anchor Drive, Half Rhino, uh, $3,570.36, and a seed container, seed slash container, $391.91 for total $3,960.36. Boarding Home Services Cleaning, $600. Beautification Grant, $100 to Jenna Tetra. Can I flag that one? Which the, one? The Jordan. That's the cleaning. cleaning the home. Um, Brian, have you checked on their work? Have you been over to see what they've done? I have. Because I was told by a historical society board member that in their opinion, the place was not clean. Let's hold that topic. That's number three that I have on the agenda. Okay, well, we'll circle that one. Circle yeah. this bill uh, then. And then. Can you go back to what, what was the rhino? What was that for? Some... I'm, I'm not sure what that one is off the top of my head. I'd have to see the bill and I might. It's a purchase. Are you talking about here? Johnson uh, Drive. Oh, that's that post. Oh, the post hole. Oh, yeah. okay. 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 Thanks. Okay. Um, okay. Um, Co-file Inc. for books, $4,628. Memorial Economic Development, Green Mountain Byways Allocation, $500. Um, Monash Inc. for sand, a total of $1,686.49. Monard, Monard's Farm and Home Fertilizer, $116.31. That's for the tree board. Uh, New England Municipal something, right to use tables, accessor expense, $489.70. What is right to use tables in? They use commercial swift tables for their assessing. And it's a table. Oh. That's the licensing. Uh, 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 okay. You're, you're thinking dinner tables? Yeah, it's like tables. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I gotcha. Like, like spreadsheets, like table, yeah. like database tables. I gotcha. Okay. Following it out. <coughs> oh, this makes sense. Rental fees. I'm going to go in the table rental business. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that gets paid out to them? Yes. 
But other than that, we're not using their services. Just for um, backups and software. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, I meant for specifically assessors. No, that's the only thing. Um, Sue Tinker pens, thirty-seven dollars and eight cents. Beamer's retirement, uh, four thousand nine hundred eighty dollars and fifty-nine cents. James Whitehill State Park, eighty-nine dollars and twenty-five cents. And Working Dog Septic Toilet Rental Facilities Maintenance and Port Parties, a total of six hundred fifty dollars. Is that the same spot? So again? Port of parties. It's, it's, it's usually for the park and Legion uh, Legion Field is for teaching at the and the rest of it is for the uh, mill house, uh, the mill park. Yeah. And they do have one over at uh, the skate park, too. That's a different company. Yes. But yeah, uh, yeah we don't need it. We have port lots kind of all over. No yeah. <laughs> um, next item on the agenda, review and approve minutes from past meetings, July 18th. Make a motion to approve. Your motion, do you have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And ayes have it. Select board issues and concerns. None? Madam um, Chair? Yes. Uh, for some dumb reason, I thought your name was Saturday with Corey Till. It's okay. And I noticed uh, it started at 6 30 and we were not conditioned to adjust to the agenda. So it's probably too late to add a discussion on motion orders grant application. Well, we can have public comment right now if you'd like to have public comment right now. Excuse me. You can have public comment right now if you'd like to have public comment under issues and concerns. Okay. It's all yours. Yeah, I, uh, I was a little late uh, actually reading the minutes. Uh, I guess maybe because I was on the select board and I've actually enjoyed my time off. I haven't been keeping track of things. And, uh, I just happened to be kind of going through the minutes and I came across May 2nd, item 15, and talked about an update on Northern Borders Regional Commission grant application. It appears as if we missed that again this time. Now, I know we missed it the last month, and uh, I was always busted at Brian's job, so it. it appears as if it fell by the wayside again. And I'd just like to know why. I mean, this is very important. I mean, this is close to a million dollars, and this is a way to jumpstart the industrial park. And here we are uh, in a, a delay pattern again, yep. and not being able to move forward with this project. Yep. And it's a project that really has riled up a lot of people in our community because we're not going forward with it. So I just want to know why this fell through the cracks again. So we had discussed that on in that meeting that you're referring to, the May 2nd meeting, we did discuss it. Um, and it was a deadline miss. It was actually a requirement, not um, formally, there was not a requirement to submit a letter of intent. And um, there was admission that there was a dropping of the ball that occurred uh, because that requirement changed and it was required. And that made us <coughs> ineligible at the point it was realized. I know, but you know, sometimes something that important you just can't leave it to chance. And maybe it would have been uh, forthcoming if somebody kept into that to see if the thing had changed from one year to another. Yep. And we wouldn't be in this situation. You know, this money isn't going to last forever. It could dry up at the time, and we could be out of the cold. Yep. Appreciate your comment. Thank you. Any other issues or concerns? Oh, okay, next up, treasurer's report. Do not, Rosemary. What's your status report? Good 
This is final end of year. I uh, will say it's 97% done. We still bought a bunch of stuff that for rec. On June 30th, I'm going to have to see the credit card bill yet to make sure all those are all done. Okay. So I have um, put the paving money in the reserve. So we have about a total of close to 168000 in that reserve for paving. And that will cover our outstanding invoices. Do you remember how much that? Those bids were. I, I hesitate to say off the top of my head, but I know we had talked about what the reserve was going to be and we were in good health. Mm -hmm. But I, I'd rather not try and quote the numbers off the top of my head. Um. Yeah, it was like 130 and 20 was like, I want to say we were close, but not really right that area. So it yeah. sounds like we got the money. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it, it was definitely, we were in good health. I just mm -hmm. don't remember exactly how much it was. Basically, it tied us to the right time. Or is that the well, sir, we didn't spend it in fiscal 22. So we <clears throat> applying it towards the paving we're going to do this fall. And we'll have the fiscal 23 money between the two of them. Our cash flow, essentially our cash flow will be fine because budget and expense is one thing, but cash flow is another. Right. And our cash flow will be fine with the outstanding expenses. Yeah. That's basically what it boils down to. Right. Thank you. So for our next regular meetings, you guys will probably have a accurate accounting of what the surplus is mm -hmm. and what recommendations the board should be yes. applying on surpluses. Okay, sounds good. Uh -huh. Okay, so we have. I mean, I just have to say, wipe the brow, right? As the middle of the year, we were a little worried. Thank you. Perfect, guys. We were like close to fifty thousand. The most estimated. And that was a lot because of the mud season. Spent a lot on highway. Yeah, our highway. Yeah, but we did, a there's a couple of projects we didn't do. Listers, the assessor amount was cheaper, and we didn't do anything on the Scrivener Bridge. Those are big amounts. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for the and we've got four errors and omissions for the grant list. One was Patty Patno moved her home, mobile home before April 1st of this year. So and that was missed on the grant list. And Armstrong's had a fire at their trailer. And that Vermont Transco is just the village tax. Green list was incorrect. And yeah, Chessmore, Chessmore properties on um, Route 100 C, the, they missed a building going on to that property. So, do you need a motion to motion approve to the various yeah, I found these when I was going through the tax bills. <coughs> Do you know what the building is on Chesborough Road property? You know, on Route 100 C, that one that's got the kind of flat roof with the um, oh. solar panels on it. I look brand new. Oh I yeah, I do. They had just the in the land and they added the building to it. Okay. Sure. The Transco stock is something the village owns. They own stock no. in Transco. This is. Um, the transmission lines. Okay. Thank you. So pretty close to a wash. Yeah. What we gained and what we lost. Yeah. So as far as yeah. impact on reason, tax or why why did it go from 105 to 361 the transcom? I think 
Carrie told me that she contacted the our state advisor, and he told her to add two figures together, get the village, and they shouldn't have done that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, I would I would move to accepting errors and omissions as presented. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Are you in favor of your own motion? Don't yes. Aye. Correct. Ayes have it. What else we got, Rosemary? We did the testing on the new tabulator last week, and everything came out perfect. So we should be all ready for the uh, election next week. We sent out about 200 absentees and got back about 50% so far. What percent was it? About 50. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're still requesting them. Yeah. And you're, are you allowed to, you're allowed to count those the day of the election, right? Yes. Okay, you got anything else? That's all I had. Perfect. Thank you very much. Brian. All right. Plan purchases. So we've got one planned purchase this week. This came in uh, earlier today, and it's for uh, river access to the Lamoille River on Lenway Lane across from the salt shed staging area. Uh, if you recall, the Vermont River Conservancy installed a set of stairs there for us um, a couple of years ago, two or three years ago. Um, we've had the stairs for a while. We have to take them out every winter. Uh, use the location, the freezing and ice from the river would damage the stairs otherwise. So we can't have a permanent installation there. So we have to move it out and move it back in. While it was moved out and in our storage area, uh, the stairs were damaged. Uh, so the Vermont River Conservancy is asking for us to pay for the repairs of the stairs. They paid for the stairs in the first place. They're asking us to pay for what amounts to new stairs. Uh, it might come in a little bit less than this if there's a decent amount of wood that they can salvage, but. Are we gonna keep rebuilding these stairs? Probably if we stop running over them, but it must have been something serious to damage them. Uh, it was roof. roof. <laughs> yeah. What does roof mean? Uh, roof collapse. Onto the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's not gonna happen again, right? No. <laughs> that would be our hope. This, this is 1200 bucks. What is our insurance deductible? Um, is it a thousand? I think you're right. Um, it, it, it won't harm our, I mean, we won't be penalized like other insurers for filing a claim. Coming less than this. Uh, yeah, it may come in less than a thousand. So this and is. And we're going to spend $200 filling out paper, frankly. To what? We're going to spend $200 just trying to file a claim. claim. Us, like our resources. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's an old salt board number. So we want to. Which I think was value judgment on the value of my work. <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion authorizing the expenditure up to $1,200 for the stair repairs. Brian, where, where would we be paying this out of uh, building, buildings and grounds? I think it would be buildings and grounds. We don't have something that's this is a perfect fit for, but I would call it buildings and grounds. It's a you know repair to 
<clears throat> public facilities. Does anybody think different? Yes. Okay. Did anybody second your motion? Nobody seconded the motion. That's a very good question. You did? Yep. Okay. You just did. Okay. I just did. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Mike? Take a public comment. Sure. Uh, it seems to me 32 hours uh, running this little small job was a little excessive. The labor cost is 950 hours. It's $1,200 at the moment. The scheme of things isn't that much, but it does seem to me it's a little small. So the motion's for up to, for what it's worth, but. I know, I know, I have that goal, so I can share it as you think I see it's the most up to. Yep, okay. So we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Ayes have it. We're going to listen for three ayes. Any other plan of purchase, Ms. Brian? No, that's it. Okay. Uh, some volunteer support. Okay. First up, we have uh, a noise waiver request for Willow Crossing. Uh, they are planning a celebration of life for Fern Feather on August 26th and 27th. Uh, you also see a note on there that they would like to go until 2 a.m., uh, but will end earlier if so required. Well, it says it's too late. We're requesting until 12. Yep. Wouldn't we allow um, Luke's going to? I mean, they have outdoor concerts all the time. They go to two. Right in the same. We way. don't give them noise waivers. They don't request noise waivers. So, right. in theory, they're violating our ordinance by going beyond 10. <laughs> and not theory, in reality. Who is <laughs> it? We, it's Luke's. Uh, Luke's. It's a concert venue down at Luke's. Was ever brought the sheriff to issue a ticket without a noise ordinance waiver? This is for their out and out. Yeah, of course they have. Right. Exactly. Brian, re refresh our memories. What would our normal, uh, what, what does the ordinance say in terms of ending of uh, noise? <coughs> Let me have those binders. I know it's not. I know it's not two o'clock. I believe it's ten, but they do this regularly, don't they? They have concerts down there. I don't think so. Not, well, not anymore. They, they used to. The we had complaints in the past. Now. I remember. Uh, so think of any no, no, I never. I, has a little concert venue. As long as I've been here, I haven't received a complaint about noise from Willow Cross. The mm -hmm. reggae concerts, concerts were 25 years ago. Give you context. <laughs> yeah. I was in <laughs> well, yeah, but they, they, Willow they, Crossing has had them more recently. They, they had, had a strike. Yeah. 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 That was a smoke out. Oh, yeah. yeah. A hoedown? Yeah. yeah. It was something that legalizing marijuana or something they did. Right. Yeah. That was oh, okay. two years ago. <laughs> yeah, they seem like relatively time. remote. I, yep. I'll make the motion we accept it just to a. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Does it say, are they, are they having live music or? What's the noise wa wa waiver? I, I believe we have representatives. Okay. We're here. We're here on behalf of my brother, and yeah, we, we do we do plan on having some live music that night, but everything's going to be kept under control and respected. So that's the background on that. You know. Any idea how many people we are? Roughly two hundred, three hundred. Are you having? What, what have you got for security? Uh, security. 
Sierra security, we're right now figuring out if it's the team that's being built from like Google Security around whether we're able to work with this uh, specific security agency. But we're not entirely sure how many people it's going to be at this point because this all is kind of just like coming together right so now. Rough, rough so, um, so we should know, we should have a better idea about numbers as we get a little bit closer. Um, we just kind of got the like logistical details. And wanted to, you know, wanted to come here and. and yeah. I've, I've historically, Willow Crossing is, has respected the uh, town ordinances, and that was we were just hoping to follow the footsteps of that. You know. My name is Sam Barrow. What's the heavy school lesson? D A R B E A U. Okay. And my name is Aranta Farrow. I, I personally would be more comfortable with midnight, but maybe it's an age thing. <laughs> well, I'll put it this way. I haven't seen the ball drop in 20 years. So. <laughs> well, I, but I mean, there are, there's a farm right there. I'm sure they get up early and there's, uh, uh, what's his name? He lives on top of the hill by the church. Yeah, we're going to be talking to all of the neighbors uh, and whatnot. And I think that they've gotten permission uh, for you all to have the ordinance extended like this. So the neighbors, as is my understanding, are relatively aware, kind of work with EP on a roller crossing when things like this are happening. Will you have room enough on site for your parking? Uh, well, actually, that neighbor, we're figuring that out right now. I called him today, but the neighbor who's right next door generally works with youth doing parking. So um, I think that there'll be something like par cars parked over there and then uh, going into combination. The combination, yeah. That's how they've done it in the past. And what, what time would it be starting? So it's going to start on Friday. Uh, we're thinking like two, uh, two, two in the afternoon or something like that. We'll, we'll kind of officially start. Um, and then, yeah, it's kind of, it's a unique, uh, it's a, it's a unique gathering because, um, because of the circumstances in which we are gathering. So our intention is not to have like a crazy party where everyone's getting up, you know, it's more just to kind of come together. A remembrance. It's yeah. A celebration of Kurt's life. Um, so so that being said, like our intention is to kind of have the amplified music be gentle and supportive of healing and you know, not quite, not quite like even what's happened in the past. Uh, the noise ordinance does limit does limit noise after 10 p.m. What question was asked? There were exceptions. I, I was asking um, what the limit under the ordinance was. Uh, so if we grant this waiver, we will be extending the waiver beyond. Okay. The, How long beyond, beyond the waiver? The, the ordinance. I yeah, okay. and, and you, we have a motion. Was there? There's not a second. It just have a motion. Mm -hmm. So, do we have a second? Dies for lack of a second. Right. You guys are getting a hold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I would move allowing uh, the event to take place but shutting down at midnight. And I would ask that you also reach out to the sheriff and communicate with them because. Absolutely. Yeah, I, Absolutely. I know when you had the, uh, the can you event finish, was wait, down. Wait, can you finish your motion first? Oh, okay. Your motion. Yep. <laughs> That's my motion. So your motion was um, and to grant the waiver till midnight? Yes. Oh, I'll second that. Can we have a motion and a second? Go ahead. And when we, or when there was an event down there prior, I, I think it was legalizing marijuana or something like that. It was quite a large group. Uh, the weekend they selected happened to be like a super heat wave thing going on. It was like 90 something degrees. And uh, there was a requirement to 
came in late, requiring water you know, supplied and things like that. But uh, that'll, that'll be a necessity on, on in the middle of at the end of August and then in the heat of the summer. It it could be hot. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, I'll, I'll, I'll personally make sure if the water is provided. You know, if it's hot, the yeah. Water provision, everybody will be drinking their fair share of water. Okay. And I think we also had an ambulance down there, but that was probably a larger crowd. Yeah, that was a larger crowd. Yeah, that, that triggered the state of Vermont regulation for, because I think it was over 500, 500 people. Probably, yeah. Um, which triggered a whole other set of potential criteria. So if there is a potential for you to go to get to a 500 number, yeah. you'll need to go okay. through those steps. I don't think we'll, but I feel good to know. Yeah. I, I have a feeling it's going to be under 500, yeah, comfortably. Okay. So thanks for that. And we will follow up. Yeah. We're just getting a good Yeah, cool. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Mark? Nothing there. Just send us a five minute discussion. Oh, yeah. So much of that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All right, have it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Next up, uh, the Racial Justice and Social, Social Equity Committee uh, is requesting that the uh, town, they're requesting permission uh, to display a progress pride, pride flag for the month of September for Vermont Pride Month on or adjacent to the municipal building from the select board and the trustees. So we'd be providing, if, if we choose to, we'd be providing one part of the approval they need. Because the village would have to weigh in. It, it is, if we were to choose to display it on this building, it would be is jointly owned property so, or on the flagpole or on this property. Uh, the flagpoles are not town property. Those are village property. Yeah, we were specific to not include the flagpoles because that's been um, just not by the trustees. Uh, it's, gone, it's gone nowhere. So yeah, we were very, that's why we were very specific to, to word the motion on our days of the building. I guess my my trouble with this is when the request came for the select board uh, for the Black Lives Matter flag, and uh, the select board was fairly clear. I thought that I know I personally was clear that we would not support any flag banner or what have you on this building or around this building. And I'm a little disappointed to see this request come in. Um, I, I personally feel it's, well, especially if we approve this one and we've already denied one before, that can open us up to a, a loss of for favoritism. But, uh, you know, I still feel very strongly. I, I just don't think it's appropriate and I, I would not support it. But so, so in terms of why I heard for you, or again, um, I think part of democracy is respectful disagreement. And so we as a committee believe that it's an entirely appropriate for the town government to display support for communities that experience uh, disproportionate amount of violence when they have weather. We just approved an extension on the noise ordinance for, for celebration of life. Um, and so, you know, I, Vote for it or against it, it's not my own personal disrespect, but it's just like we, we believe this is appropriate or I think our cost is so for Well, I guess my point was um, if we allow one and not another, because we have to be neutral as a mm -hmm. town government, we have to be neutral. Sure. If we allow one and not another, then we're picking favorites, and that's where we get in trouble. Um, Barry City had a similar thing where they have a flagpole or something in their city common, and they were authorizing anybody and everybody that they could fly a flag there or what have you for 30 days or some amount of time. And uh, 
a religious affiliation came in on fly a flag. They denied it because they didn't want to get into the church state thing. It went to the Supreme Court and the Vermont Supreme Court uh, ruled against them that if because they had opened a flagpole to anybody and everybody, and then they discriminated against the religious affiliation, um, they were held in the wrong. And, and that's sort of the concern I'm getting into with Pandora's box. If we open it and we start approving helter skelter, this one, but not that one, that's where we can get in trouble. So our position um, is- One second. Sure. Um, I also actually am disappointed that I feel I have to agree with that stance because not only has Vermont town run into that, but Boston ran into that and it went to the U.S. Supreme Court and the U.S. about a church flag wanting to be flown and the Supreme Court ruled that um, they could, they must allow any flag to be flown since it was opened up, a single flag was opened up regardless of the affiliation. It bothers me personally a lot because I feel like we should be able to fly these flags as a municipality, but I do worry that I do worry about the last that lawsuit end of it um, sure. because there's there is um, statutory there's not statutory, there's history of cases being won around those and I um, actually ran for select board because I was really kind of sick of the division in our town. Um, I'm just gonna be on my soapbox just for a minute, but I was really sick of the division. And if I wanted to do anything here, I wanted to be partial and not play to the division. I don't wanna play sides on anything. I want to do what's right and what's fair, period. Um, so I very much support flying pride flags. Uh, I just don't know that I can support it on the board personally for those reasons. So I would just submit that this is not a citizen activist group requesting the fly flag. This is a uh, town asking to fly a fly flag that's consistent with the message of intent. So the statement that was adopted. Uh, I hear you. But yeah, I'm to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have we talked to our attorney about it? No, we have not. So you two are concerned about legal suits that haven't had to our attorney. That's true. Even, even last year. We haven't brought it up here, yeah. So I think that, I mean, this part hasn't been tested, and I'm not an attorney, but I, would, I think there's probably a difference between a citizen group saying, we want to fly our flag, as opposed to <laughs> Saying this supports a statement of regarding that as an addition to regarding that as an addition. Fair enough. So I can uh, maybe offer a little bit of insight on Mark's question. Mm -hmm. I haven't consulted with our attorney, of course, either, but uh, the League of Cities and Towns has issued a recommendation that towns establish, if they're considering flying flags like this. Uh, that the town establish a policy and have that policy reviewed by legal counsel. You know, that they think that they do not have a model policy yet, but they think that some policies will be defensible. Uh, Seems like other towns are already doing it. I mean, certainly schools are doing it. I think the case that Beth referenced is pretty recent. It's new. It's a last month, a couple weeks ago. So I don't think people have really figured out what the lay of the land is after that case yet. But uh, um, yeah, let's. I'd be open to that. What do you think, Duncan? I, in all honesty, don't believe that. Flying flags other than the state of Vermont, the American flag, um, is a function of municipal government. So I'm a policy. If if a group came in, whether it was a sanctioned group or not, and wanted to uh, fly the Nazi flag, I'd be opposed to that. 
um, I'd be opposed to pretty much anything. You know, I just, I don't think it's the function of town government. I know there's a lot of pressure. I know there's a lot of interest in making statements um, politically. And if somebody wants to fly a flag on their own property, um, I'm all about it. You know, knock yourself out. But I don't think public property should be used for that purpose. Because I think it just puts everybody in an awkward position. How do you decide, you know, how do you create a policy that is fair to everybody? Um, and so my take is the policy is don't allow it, period. But that's me. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna get consensus for one second. Is anyone interested in creating a flag policy? I think we ought to. Well, if the policy is no flags, yes. <laughs> You're interested in writing a policy, okay? And are you interested in writing? Well, we have we have one. So let's let's take that up. Okay. okay. So you have an action. Margo. Is this time for just public comment? Please. So it is complicated, and I just think about the policy. It just strikes me that it's beyond a shame that feeling safe has become a political issue. The what? Has become a political issue. Yeah, <laughs> feeling, feeling safe. And flying a flag such as let's just put the progress five five flag really it, it, it communicates so much to people who feel who are marginalized and oppressed, right? Who don't feel seen, included, welcome. State. So while I hear you saying it might not, it's not the role of a town government to sort of walk into those waters, I would hope, you know, looking at you, the board, that the work is about building a community, right? Where people are welcome, included, safe. And you know, some people say, well, it's just a flag. Well, a flag can communicate so much. We mentioned the American flag, the, the flag of Iran. We have these flags so that as a visible affirmation of who we are and what we believe. And so with this particular flag, you know, it has flown at you know, the US you know, Department of uh, embassies around the world. Uh, at NASA, at state capitals in so many states. So there are governments, there are municipalities who are flying, making the choice to fly these flags. Um, and perhaps it is courageous, you know, and I think that's what I'm asking people to think about. Um, and thinking about the flag poles down in the center of town, where we have flown the Black Lives Matter flag, we have flown the Pride flag. And that, that land is owned by who? Those five poles are owned by uh, the village. By the village. Yeah. And I don't know if there's not been any uh, kind of like conversation that we just hearing about you know, food or flying Nazi flag or has the village been engaged in those types of um, challenges or conversations? I, I'm, I'm not aware. I can't really speak for the village. Yeah, so I guess that we all be aware of them. That conversation if they were happening. So, you know, it's, it's for one month, it's five weeks uh, in Vermont in September. You have to fly with like out from like on a sandwich board so, so that people coming in, they, they get the message. So many people have, have approached people who have heard about the
Uh, case in point, I would imagine half the count would go berserk if there was a Trump 24, 2024 side on the side of the municipal office. That's illegal, I believe. That's a political affiliation. Well, some people believe that uh, this is political too because the progress flag has incorporated into it Black Lives Matter. And Black Lives Matter has political action committees all over the country. So it could easily argue that they're political also. Uh, we're, so we're not going to get into that I correct sure. statement of so political to, views here. Views that, that's not a correct statement. The flag was when it was made back in like what, the 70s or 80s about hope. Right? That's who we're hope, inclusion, welcome. Okay. Uh, any other comment? Yeah. I just, part of my daily work is traffic policy. I don't think it's that complicated to craft the policy for the guardrail is the request has to come via the uh, town. And has to be, you know, some of the statements and the value statements that are. In fact, not only would be happy to, but I'd like to request to be able to consult with them. Yep, so that's what I was going to suggest. Yeah. Um, it would be great if you could come to the meeting that we work through it. So we'll make sure you're on the invite. Right? Okay, um, so we will, so any other further discussion or action around the flag? Brian, are you gonna consult with our attorney first? I would like to know actually from the attorney, I think that we have a couple of people who would be interested in knowing what the attorney's sure. thoughts are. The advice from the LZT was just a newsletter or it wasn't right. like a consultation or anything, so. And they're not attorneys, so yeah. Yeah, and it came out of the, Came out of the Mac office, but it wasn't just legal to advice. Super, just to be super clear, very specifically, I would be interested in not having them reference what we already know about the Supreme Court ruling, but instead about um, equity groups that are sponsored by the town. And if there are any considerations we should be making. I suppose the college license wax is. I, I, I was wondering yeah. if the college flies these flags and if Blairway flies them. And, and there's quite a lot of public groups that fly these flags. So I'm not a college anymore, but that's a little bit ago. Yes. Yes. Affiliated with the campus, they're part of the campus. Students make their requests. Citizens. <laughs> Yeah. So well, I think yes. citizens could petition us to do a lot of things that we wouldn't necessarily want to do. Okay. Um, so we'll follow up on that one. That'll be a follow up item. So I want to thank Jeff thank you for coming. Um, so I'm sorry. So where is this? So the word is like. So we're going to have a follow-up on this. Brian's going to check in with our attorney, and we'll have to take it back up. I think that will help inform us. Um, okay, next up is the Holcomb House. Yes. So the we had a certain amount of hours budgeted for cleaning up on, on, at the Holcomb House that's been completed. Um, there are some remaining needs at the Holcomb House. Uh, there's a decent amount of drywall or plaster repair. And uh, I think that some of the carpeting in the place is probably not worth trying to save either, uh, which might reveal some additional repairs. But the, the Holcomb House has been cleaned up, uh, garbage removed, to, Considerably better shape. Has it been cleaned? Like garbage removed is very different than cleaning. The, all of the garbage has been removed. The cleaning was, we were running out of time, so the cleaning was not as high of a priority as getting the rest of the garbage and other things out. Um, so I'd say that the cleaning, given that there were also repairs that needed to be done, the cleaning wasn't. Cleaning was not a particularly high priority compared to the other taxes. So the, there is more cleaning that needs to be done. Uh, 
and repairs. Um, okay. What did we approve for? We approved up to six hundred dollars. Is that correct? In our. Uh, it was. The board didn't approve anything because it was less than a thousand dollars. I was able to approve it as a authorized purchasing agent for the town, uh, and I approved up to six hundred dollars. Which is why the cleaning stopped. Yes. So that six hundred dollars basically got us garbage removal. A little more, but yeah, basically garbage removal. Which is a good deal. Yeah. Is it? That place was sky high mattresses and beds. I saw it. So, yeah. how and much uh, well, expense would they be to do a nice clean? I would probably say a couple days worth of work, maybe another two or three hundred dollars. Um, it works for two days for three hundred dollars. I, mean, I want to hire clean. You actually do want to hire this person. <laughs> you told me at one point how much you were paying for 30, cleanup. 35 bucks an hour. Yeah, we did considerably less. Um, so do we, if we need to do, let me every state this, do we need to do drywall? So you're saying we do need to do drywall, uh, plaster, carpet. Carpeting those need to be done, or the, are we just using this for storage? Like I think that's what we talked about. That's kind of what we need to talk a little bit about. Is it is now at a stage where we can fairly decide what we want to do next with it, and certain things we should contribute. You know, we should do a little bit more repairs or or whatever before we get into uh, certain uses. Are there holes in the walls or? Yes. Yeah, yeah. there are okay. The question in my mind is, are we turning the plumbing off up there and turning the heat off up there? Those, those are big, big things. <laughs> you know, if it were my baby, I would cut those pipes and turn the, turn the plumbing off up there. And I would want it to freeze and then decide whether we're going to, or the historical society is going to do it. It's, it's pretty nasty up there. But when I was there, it's more than a, it's like a pressure washer. Plus, the holes in the walls, the, the floors look like crap. The wood floors. I was asking about the repairs because, we, okay, if there are holes in the walls, we need to repair them. Well, do it. If there are <laughs> holes in the plaster. But the question is the Historical Society is supposed to come back to this board with a proposal of occupying the property. If that involves fixing those holes, that could be part of their proposal. Sure. So I, I agree that you know my, my take on it is we should clean the hamburgers off the wall. Um, but as far as major major repairs or maintenance, I don't my own personal opinion is we shouldn't do any of that until we hear from the historical society what their plan is. If they come back and say, geez, thanks, but no thanks, then we have to decide, you know, do we fix it and are we gonna repair it and are we gonna advance it? What are we gonna do? Yep. Perfect. Right. I, I agree with you completely. Okay. For me, the decision is heat and water. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just a, a surface, make it sanitary, but it doesn't have to be. Well, and I think we've done that. I think that it's clean to the point where historical society can make an assessment on what they think the future of the space is. There is more work to be done. If there are hamburgers on the wall. There are. And mold is going to grow. We need to clean better. If that's not going to happen, then let's get the assessment. Hey, look, we have a health inspector here. <laughs> health officer. <laughs> there will be a check mark in the box for him. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what page it's on, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm asking the question about the repairs for a reason because if we're going to play paper cleaning that's a real cleaning, why would we really clean if we're going to do repair and get dust and crap everywhere? And, and that's kind of why we stopped at this point is both we ran out of money uh, for our projection, but also 
I think that it's a pretty, it's at a pretty good spot to decide where the next couple steps are uh, so that we don't end up, you know, yeah, cleaning it and then throwing a bunch of plaster dust all over everything. Yeah. I would like so to see. We're going to reach out to the, uh, the historical society. Yeah. Well, they have a building committee. Um, I would think that we should advise them that it has been, that it's no longer occupied. And I think, I think we authorized that committee to go upstairs once they were gone and we did. do their evaluations, et cetera, anyway. We did. I'm sure we did. I think, I think Beth, that we should, um, when I was there with Brian, all the smoke detectors were tore out of the place. And we should probably um, we need just, insurable. Of, just make sure they get put back in and it's insurable. Yeah. You know, it could be just a matter of putting battery in and connecting it back up. Yep. Okay. So Brian, action items. Look for proposal from the from the committee and get smoke uh, detectors installed or just get them in now. Yeah, yep. that's good. Got it. Because I think, Brian, I think every single one is on the floor. No, not every single one, but. Uh, close enough. <laughs> if you think you come like that, close enough. <laughs> yes. More than one was on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> Even if there was just one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we have we have put a hold on the six hundred dollar bill for joints cleaning. Should we take a hold off that? Are you comfortable, Brian? That I am. They've I've, done. You know, I consulted you of them. I consulted with her uh, before her last day, so we kind of prioritized the last checklist of items. I think that she completed that and completed the earlier work fine. Uh, like I said. There is more work that needs to be done there, but I think it's at a point where we make assessments about what the next steps are uh, and then follow up with additional cleaning, repairs, kind of whatever we decide to do for the next step. And we, we must be, what were we holding? 900, 900 something? 975. So between the landfill bill and the $600 bill, we're not, we don't have much money left. Uh, and some public works time for hauling uh, itself. So we're over. Yeah. You, do we need to do anything else with regard to the landlord tenant law? Have we done? I have uh, documentation for everything that I've saved and separated. Uh, I had informed them that all this has been completed. Here's the totals. You don't you don't have any money due back to you, you know, come into the office if you want records and proof. Correct. Okay, so um, we'll follow back up on this one. Okay, yep. good, thank you. Economic development. All right, so I have an updated <coughs> economic development coordinator. Um, this will coincide with the um, the job posting. There was a, a couple of comments in here and a couple of things that we fixed. Um, you know, there was some talk, the some reference to the planning commission that was fixed. Uh, let's see in on the first page, the one to third paragraph. Uh, in a previous draft, uh, it had made reference to public partners, and there was some objection to both using the term public and, you know, the, the picking winners and losers from a list. So mm -hmm. I tried to address that with uh, kind of describing these as core partners, uh, and I'm just naming a couple here. I you know, no particular. We can add more, we can remove some, doesn't really matter. Uh, but I, I think that that language uh, makes it a little more 
neutral. I'm not sure if Memorial North School District. I mean, right. If it was a town school, we might work with them, but I uh, think we might cut it. Yeah, I, would. I think though that the board we should be more aware of um, employer way school. I think they're our largest employer now. I think they passed the college. There's 200 people working down there. <clears throat> they're a they're a big um. You know, they also work. Regional or it's know, not, they, not bigger than Johnson. Yeah, yeah, they're actually. They're our biggest. Are they bigger than the co-op? Yeah. yeah, I think they are. You know? Yeah, and I think they're bigger than the college. And, and they are they still um, coordinating with the skate park committee to manage the skate park? Or? They have some coordination with the skate park. I, I just I, want to. Sure. So remove the oil north in, in our. I, they don't necessarily have to be here, but it, we need to be aware of how important they are to this town. Well, I could, I could pretty easily remove Law on the North and have Laraway School. It's up to the pleasure of the board. What if people... I would be okay. I, I would actually support that. I think that's more appropriate to Johnson. Yeah. yeah. So strike Lamoille North and replace it with Laraway? Yeah. yeah. What do people think about? I know the wording was public and you sub substituted public for, uh, or you substituted core for public. What does it, anybody think about just saying with partners, striking core and just saying relationships like, with partners? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it. Okay. Well, this uh, is more. Sure. The essential tasks, uh, I think you've seen it since this was cut down to, these are all items taken from our priority list now. Okay. Uh, grammar is a little bit different from where it appears on our priority list just because of its use, but. I mean, we don't have the all important and other duties. The duty that is specified. <laughs> yeah. So, add another bullet. I think we just need to do something and other um, requests of the board, something to that effect. Anything that's like board wants. <laughs> Copy. Copy. Or <laughs> any three <laughs> members of the select board. <laughs> right. <laughs> I also think that we should, I mean, these are all good and you could fit a Mack truck into some of these bullets, but we don't specifically say um, pursue funding for the light industrial uh, slash business part. And I think we should. You think that one's big enough should be Pulled out well, I don't know that it needs to be a separate bullet, but the first one could be coordinate, implement, uh, comma at the end, comma, such as. Um, the second one, I think, is meant to do that. Because we talked about this a little bit and we went back and forth on it because we talked about all of our options with it. And I don't know that we settled on an option with the industrial park. Because we talked about things like. Um, going all in and building it out. But we also talked about the fact that we're still collecting feedback on our fund usage. And it may be that some big, bright, special thing comes our way. And maybe our constituents or we want to put in infrastructure and sell or not put in infrastructure and sell. I think we intentionally didn't call it industrial park for, I think it was intentional. Don't you guys do feel like am I making this up? I sort of think they're two separate things because the opera thing is a one no, no, time. No. Sorry, that's not why I wasn't fine. I didn't mean that it's the same as the opera funds. What I mean is that I think we didn't call out industrial perks specifically um, because we're not at a point where we're building out an industrial park specifically right now. All right. But but I think the important piece of that is to pursue. It doesn't mean that we have to build it out, 
But if we don't pursue funding options for it, we yeah, don't know what we don't know. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Okay. So that's 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 the point I'm trying to make is that should, in my opinion, I'm just one of five, but in my opinion, it was the highest priority in our prioritization list. Mm -hmm. um, and my thoughts are, there is nothing that I can think of that the community investment has been so great on any individual project that what the community has invested into this light industrial park. That's sort of like a thing of its own. It's separate than the, all the other projects we do or want to do. So in light of what you're saying, not opposed to pulling it out, but on bullet two, it says identify and if so directed, pursue funding sources to support approved projects. Um, perhaps we should say and support pursue funding sources to support prioritized projects of the board or something like that. Um, that way it's not about a specific approval that we move forward with the project. Instead, it's about the, what the board's priorities are. I could move to that. No matter, no matter what, when they're hiring, I mean, we're going to give direction on day to day or month to month, whatever. So what was your suggestion? My suggestion is we say identify and if so directed, pursue funding sources to support prioritized projects of the board. You got that? I do. And it, your recollection is the same as mine about I, I, whether we were going to particularly identify the light industrial park in here or not was my impression from the direction I got from the board was that you wanted it more open-ended. Uh, but if we're deciding now that we want to narrow it down, that we can do that too. Just a little bit. So it would be substituting prioritized prior of for approved of the board. Yeah. <clears throat> Otherwise, I think this looks good. I will be really curious to see what kind of response we get. Well, where are we with um, regard to putting out the request for services? Uh, that I, is my fault for delay. I had I was confused in our email conversation or the email that we received. We didn't have an email conversation because we can't. But the email that we received. Um, about the objection to and wanting to discuss the job description at our next board meeting, not the job posting. Uh, so we're going ahead with the job posting uh, or the, the request for proposals. Uh, which we are as we go. Yes, we are. And you did direct me to post that one. I have become confused about what we were putting a hold on uh, for conversation at this meeting. We should proceed post haste. Yep. Yes, I agree. All right. Yep, that's nice. Next up, uh, let's see, the RP for fuel. I was able to get some totals uh, that I included here. So these are three running three-year averages um, for the different fuels at the different locations. Uh, different fuels at different locations? Yes. Okay, so we don't consolidate all the locations, all the heating oil for the town, all the propane for the town. Nope, we get heating oil, Public Works is the only place that gets diesel, but we have heating to oil at, uh, let's see, Railroad Street, no, Library. 
I saw all the places. Yeah. But did we ask for proposals for each of those places or did we ask for? We're asking for a, this requests a one bid to provide <clears throat> Thank you. all of this, uh, including delivery charges. So that's why we're separated out by location. Uh, so that, you know, they know that they're delivering to more than one location. In the past, we did it with the village to try to get more bulk. No, and I this is with sense. village it's cooperation. Like heating oil, 15,000 gallons. You know, I, saw, I vaguely remember the numbers. Yep. I and mean, of course they're going to deliver it, and they're going to deliver it to multiple locations. And that's they have to. They have to. The thing that's not clear to me is whether or not we're looking for one vendor to provide diesel, propane, and oil, or whether we would accept bids from propane dealers for the propane piece. I think that we should consider accepting partial bids. I, I do too. Yeah, because not all dealers um, right. will deliver all of the needs. Of right. Yeah. Yep. Do we um, own our propane tanks? We do here. Yes. Yeah. Here. I think it's still plant only for theirs. I don't uh, think. Which makes a difference because dealers think. get fussy about putting propane in somebody else. Correct. You know, another dealer's tank. That's been an issue in the past. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if we own our own propane tanks. I don't think we do at Hulk of House. I think that's a Jack Horse own tank. tank. But I mean, they can they can pull the tanks. Oh, uh, they can. The thing is, we get a whole bunch every single order um, from Grosso Fuel to Hulk of House. Grosso's don't do. Yes. They deliver do, they do, do they do diesel? Do they deliver I don't, diesel? I don't think so. I think they do. Yes, they do. They, yeah, they do our tank now. They do. Yeah. I think Holcomb House, we might get two different types. We do. We have propane. There's, there's, and gas, and there's gas and oil. Yeah. There's propane and oil. The, is the propane just for Donnie's, Donnie's apartment? That he or just uh, the plants? I think he has a gas uh, dryer, a gas stove, and heat. I think it's. I think it's everything. And when you mention the sewer plant, I don't think the sewer plant. Do they draw off our tank here? Or do they no, have their, their own. They have their own. Yeah, I don't think that that was included in the data that I had. And they have um, at the water plant. They have propane there too. Does the right. fire department draw off from this tank? No. No. But we share the uh, the generator. The generator. The generator. Okay. Right. They have their own number two fuel. Okay. I find it amazing that we're not bulk buying with. All the nonprofits in town and other counties. Yeah, I mean, if if I had nothing to do, I would call up High Park and Morrisville and Stone and say, "Oh, so we're running two hundred ga thousand gallons of diesel. Who wants to provide it?" That's a really good point. But I like county government too. <laughs> <laughs> It would be a big project. I'd throw a little rentals in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, do we want to, as to Duncan's question, I think your question is a great one. And I would think that we would want to do whatever would give us the best thing for our buck, which would be accepting anything that comes our way for review. And the question would be is, um, are we, um, <clears throat> typically do we lock in a price? Depends on both. That's that, you know, what, what they've always used to come back and say was, 
we'll we'll lock in a price of a cent and a half above uh, the petroleum price in Boston on Monday, yeah. or you know whatever. Yeah. Um, that's what. That's what. Um, okay. Thank you. And you know, but but that's worth discussion. If if you want a locked in price for propane, for example, that's a different a different animal. It's a different animal with with heating oil too. If you yeah. want a locked in price, everybody's right. just going to be conservative right at the moment. And the only reason I even question this is. If I knew which way fuel prices were going, I would probably be living somewhere yeah. else. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we may we may find that the fuel dealers say there's too much volatility in the market. If you want a locked in price, you're gonna pay you know premium dollar, but we can give you a guarantee of you know set and a half above. That that may be the way to go is to ask them. Set and a half above what the spot market is. Yeah, I forget what the I forget what the term is that they use. For There's some term, but it's do, the you know the Boston, New York oil futures market. futures market or price or whatever it is. Um, you know what I found out recently is that the majority of fuel oil in New England is in transport is in trucks. It's not in tanks. It's in trucks. It's not yeah. it's, it, it, it isn't stored, it's moving. Right. Yeah. These, these yeah, it's in my truck. The missing thing is really getting the village on board. And do you think the uh, the acting village manager would be able to so, <laughs> so at our, our last meeting, I did approach uh, the village chair if they would be interested in going out for bid, in at least like seeing what we yeah. came up with, um, and they are. So, what I'd like to do with this next, I have got a couple of your suggestions here. I want to take a pass at that and then give it to them for their next meeting on Monday. So that would include the fire station and the sewer plant and yep. water, water, water treatment facility. And the, and the booster station. The booster the booster has propane too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. None of those, those were those in the data that I, I had. Yes. Uh, so they must use a fair amount of fuel. And the sewer plant. Sewer plant does. Yeah. Good user. Really? You know, can we come down that's a thousand bucks? So we're gonna have to see can. if we can get I'll talk to you about this too, but if we can get if we're missing a vendor, by the way, while you're on vacation or right before you went on vacation, I asked Lydia to pull these by vendor, but I only have asked for course in Brasso. So it's always uh oh uh, okay. So we shouldn't be missing anything here then because it should be in the data, it just may not be the description may not be. Mm -hmm. In terms of total total gallons. Yeah, I forgot to pivot table against data essentially. Um, so if those are two vendors, that's cool. But maybe we can get my point was maybe we can get um, I'll talk to Steve about getting our data together so we can get a combined view to talk about the joint meeting. Yep. Okay. So I'm gonna make your changes and I'm going to share it with the trustees. For their comments too. All right. Um, then we should probably. Do you want to see it again before we put it out, or should we get it out? Well, I was joking. I think that's a topic. Oh yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so uh, I do want to share that one of our executive session items uh, is for discussing communications from our attorney. And our attorney is available uh, at eight o'clock via Zoom if we want to bring him in. Um, Do we want to, Beth? Um, I don't know if we may want to. So let's jump to that. Um, 
So everybody who is on Zoom listening in, I you know you're out there. Um, we are going to put you into a the waiting room. You're welcome to come back after executive session. We're going to go into executive session for a little while. Uh, looks like our attorney is on Zoom. Um, and we'll invite you in our motion. And then we will come out of executive session and everyone invite everyone back into public meeting. So does somebody want to make a motion to go into executive session? What is our um, uh, it's number by any chance? Just the tax appeal, or the this is uh, River Road up the pitch. Okay, we can I'll make a motion that we go into executive session to discuss the communications as allowed by 1 BSA 1330A1. We may substantially put the board at disadvantage. This is disclosed for the short. Motion to a second. So this is this should be a two part motion, right? A second. And first, also, first part would be that it would put us at substantial disadvantage. disadvantage. Yes, and that's we'll what we're saying. saying. Okay. Yep, this is we're going on right now. We need a second, though. Second. Okay, we have a, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Ayes have it. And then we go into executive session. Review employees as allowed by or no, employees. No, you don't have both. You don't have both in here, Brian. You know the other one. It okay. is uh, a one. That's what I just said. That was the first one. Yep. What's the second, second one? Is three one three eight three. It's right here. Point, pointed at me. It's all in this one. It's two sentences. So the first one is, Pre does the board find the premature disclosure substantially disadvantages the town? Right. Yeah, we did that. We did voted, that. Passed. So if you do that, the board may enter into executive session as allowed by 313A1. Mark is moving to a second. Second. I'll second with a suggestion for a friendly amendment inviting Brian Rosemary and our attorney. Oh, Paul Fletcher. Yes. Okay. Move motion second. and a second. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, we are in executive session at eight o'clock on the dock. <laughs>